Okay, so we have talked about the Marshallian demand function and the Higgsian demand function. We also know that they somehow related via the income and substitution effect. But how exactly the relationship of these two? Um, we have an equation that's called Slutsky equations, which show the relationship where we put income effect and substitution effect into the relationship of the Higgsian and the Marshallian demand function. I will tell you right now, and this is the material is probably from slide 35 until 37 of your slide. So here I already draw the demand curves on the same graph. So having derived the Marshallian demand function and the Higgsian demand function, you can draw them on the same graphs because at the end it's a function of quantity and price, right? Price on the vertical axis and quantity on the um, um, horizontal axis. So you see that the, Hick, the Hicksian demand is steeper than the Marshallian demand function. Usually, why? Because we took out the income effect already. So he has already shown a substitution effect. Now, so stick bar means he is show a smaller change in quantity when given the same price change compared with the Marshallian demand function. So think about it a little bit more, just to train your mind. You know, despite that, they still crossed at one point here. Now. So when does that happen? When do they cross? The answer is, at this point, the expenditure, which we could derive as a function of price and constant utility, equals exactly the income the budget, the income in our budget constraint. So that means two things. The first thing is now uh, given your budget constraint, given this constant utility level is the maximum you that you could attend. The second thing is to attend this is the utility level that you attend using the minimize minimum expenditure to obtain or attend you. So two things simultaneously achieved and then you get to that point. And to sum up that says that the two demands function cross are x m equals h x h sorry when income is exactly what is needed to attend the required utility level. Income is exactly what is needed under the required expenditure to attend required utility level, all right? So when they the same, now we only focus on that point now. At that point, we could write edge M, um, let's say edge 
let's denote H1. Yeah? So here also. Okay. Is a function of P1, P2, and I equals X1, H is a function of again P1, P2, and U bar. Right. Like we said, at that point, E equals I. So we could substitute it, for example, with the expenditure function to get an indirect Marshallian demand function, right? So P1, P2, E, again P1, P2, and U bar, right? We could write it like this. And once we set that from 1 and 2, We have X1 H P1 P2 U equals X1 M P1 P2 E P1 P2 U right? Okay, so this is the result that you sh you seen on slide 35. Okay, now let's continue with slide 36, the derivation further. So, I rewrote it again here, what we start on slide 35. Let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to P1 to see what happened. Now, then we would have the derivative of the Higgsian with respect to P1. Now, pretty simple on this side. However, this side is a little bit complicated because you have P1 in two places. Like one is an argument of the function itself, but one also as argument of another function, like the expenditure. So function in function. Then we need the chain rule. The chain rule for partial derivative again. So that would be the first thing is you take just take care of this first place of Q1 first. So that would be the derivative of x1 over P1 itself, yeah, plus the derivative of X M, sorry, missing here, 1. Okay, with respect to E, right? And then times the inner, here's the outer, times the inner. Inner is the derivative of E, right? With respect to P1, right? So there's a uh, chain rule for partial derivative. Okay, <clears throat> we don't have to care about P2 and U bar over here, keep it constant now. Yeah? Then, the next thing, because of Sheffard's lemma, what did Sheffard's lemma, lemma, sorry, Sheffard's lemma tell us about this part, which we just talked. Let's 
let's write it here. Shepherd Lemma. Oops, this is an M. Say that the derivative of E, the expenditure function with respect to P1, equals exactly the heat demand, right? And because we are at this point, the Higgsian demand is also the same as the Marshallian demand. We are at this point, remember, we talk about this point. Okay. So we substitute this back to the derivative of both. At the end, we would have the derivative of H1M with respect to P1 equals the derivative of H S one M with respect to E one plus now substituted now but rewrite the derivative of S M with respect to E first and then times X M from here. Now, and this is exactly the Slutsky, Slutsky equation. All right, and it tells us something about the relationship of. Marshallian demand and the Higgsian demand. Oh, sorry. So here it should be X H. I wrote it wrongly. That's why I feel a bit weird. Yeah. Okay. Next step, we're gonna talk about the interpretation of this thing. Let's use the space over here. So this is what we derived. But normally in the literature and also for a better intuition in the interpretation they write as in a normal form. which is on slide 37. Just rearrange it a bit. <coughs> so this is what is written normally. So the derivative of the Marshallian demand function with respect to P1 equals, so rearrange it and put the second term here to the other side. So that would be um, the derivative of the Higgsian minus X1M times the derivative of it with respect to I. I because E equals I. So this is what normally written in the normal form. Yeah. Okay. And here you could see that it comprises two parts. So remember in the beginning when we said when price changes, the Marshallian demand changes comprises two parts, income effect and substitution effect. Here we can see that from this equation. So this is the sum of income and substitution effect, right? What you see move from A to C directly. Remember the graph. Okay, so which part is that? Again, 
Here is the derivative of the heat or the compensated demand function with respect to price. So that's actually the slope of the compensated demand line, right? The slope of this one. What does it tell us? In the beginning, compensated demand concerns with substitution effect. How the F change when price change if we compensated the income effect already. So that's the substitution effect, right? Okay. And the second part, we also talked in the beginning, this must be the income effect. No? So this is how we decompose the Marshallian demand function changes into income and substitution effect. Okay, one last thing about the Schulski equation is we could actually write it in elasticity form, which is shown on your slide 38. So why we may need the, the different forms of this equation, the answer is um, for the sake of convenience. For example, sometime later in, in your, in your program or when you write the thesis, you want to estimate the income effect or substitution effect of certain goods um, on the consumption. This is not always possible or easy to collect all the data like this empirically on your own and derive this equation. So for convenience, sometimes like the elastic cities already calculated or provided by some literature which you could use. So just like an option for convenience, you know. And so let's do it. The first thing you do, we do the step by step. Let's arrive uh, to the elastic city form of the left hand side first. So now you have the first part in the derivative you will multiply it by what? Multiply both sides by uh, P1 over X1 to get the elasticity of X and the Marshallian, um, yeah, sorry, Marshallian demand uh, with respect to T1, so the overall elasticity, that's like the, the normal elasticity that usually you see in the literature. On the left hand side. Okay. Then we would have. X1 M over with respect to P1 times P1 over X1 equals X1 H with respect to P1 times P1 over X1. Also, right? Multiply everywhere. And then X1 M times x, the derivative of x1m with respect to income, and times p1 over x1, right? And then, like I said, on this side, you could already write as the elasticity of demand, the Marshallian demand with respect to P1, so the old price elasticity equals. Now, what is this? What is this? Does it look familiar? You could write it as the 
elasticity of x1 edge with respect to p1, right? So again, this is an outright elasticity of demand for x1, but with the compensated demand. And why we could do that? Because x1 here still holds for the slope equations that x1 equals x1, the compensated demand at the optimum point. So x1 here can be interchargeable for x either x1 h or x1 m. All right. And then here we could rearrange it a bit to see something else. Now, so minus x1 m times x1 m with respect to i times p1 x1. Now what if I multiply both the d uh, nominator and the numerator of this term by i. Is there anything change? No, I could do that, right? Because this is actually 1. So this term is 1. We just manipulate it a bit. Hmm. And you might ask, okay, why do I know that in the first place? The reason is no. Actually, I just tried to explain to you how you arrive into the elasticity form. And that is like for you to understand. Okay. Now, let's look at this part. So if you put one eye over here, rearrange it a bit. Okay. We have again... Here is already the elasticity of H1 edge with respect to P1 minus X1M. So let's write P1 X1M over I, one I over there. Take it out. And then we write again the derivative of x1m with respect to i times what is left now in the denominator is x1, right? And on the numerator is the 1i left. And so we have this part is the elasticity of the Marshallian demand with respect to I by definition. And what is here, this term? This is the budget share, right? The expenditure of X1 in total income. So that's the budget share. Let's denote as, um, let's say, K1. Now, and rewrite everything here again. So, this is the slope equation in. Elasticity form that you've seen on your slide 38. So it says that the, the Albright's elasticity of Marshallian demand equals, equals here 1 minus missing, equals the elasticity of the Hipsian's demand, the Albright's elasticity, minus 
budget share times the elasticity of Marshallian demand with respect to income. So that's the interpretation of the elasticity form of Slutsky equation. 